Hey everybody, it's Nick from Liberty Park Music, and today I want to talk to you about something that's really fun. Halloween movie music, particularly the music of the filmmaker John Carpenter. If you have any questions along the way, leave a comment down below and I, personally, will get back to you. <laughs> so I often wonder why more directors don't come from a musical background. Because if you think about it, half of a movie as a sensory experience is sound. We often forget about that part of a film, but it's a big part of it. And it would be this huge advantage if you, as an independent up-and-coming filmmaker, had the ability to create your own movie music. And that's exactly what John Carpenter did. See, he was able to create his own music for his films when he was just starting out as a director. And it allowed him to really control the atmosphere uh, that he was trying to create. And to show you just how effective he was at doing this, let's look at his revolutionary horror film, Halloween, from 1978. So let's listen for the music in this scene where the protagonist finds that one of her friends has become victim to a madman on the loose. So, through the image alone, it's hard to tell exactly what happened, but with the dissonant chord that comes in, we can tell that it's nothing good. So this is a pretty common trope that's used in horror movies, but there's no denying how effective it is, especially if you're working on a budget. There's no makeup in this, uh, there's no close-up used to show anything that's really scary. In fact, she kind of looks like she's just sleeping to me. But when the music comes in, I know right away from what I hear, not from what I see, that this isn't the case, that something really bad has happened here. She's not sleeping. Let's fast forward a little bit to later in the film where our ingenue, Jamie Lee Curtis, starts being chased by the madman Michael Myers. Oh. Oh, God. So there is a lot of scary imagery going on in here, but I would argue that the music does a lot of the heavy lifting in creating the urgency of the chase. So layers to the music are added as the chase goes on. The first of the low register notes set the pace. Then the upper register treble notes come in to increase the urgency. Right here, you first hear the interval of the major seven, and it sounds like an electronic drone in the background, and it happens right before Michael Myers starts smashing through the door. Why is this drone unsettling? Well, a major seventh is a span of the first and seventh notes in a major scale. The seventh note uh, is the last note in a major scale, and it has a very strong tendency to want to go back to or resolve itself by going back to the first note in the major scale. So you hear the seventh, and you want to go back to the first, which is also called the tonic. If instead of going back to the tonic, we continually play the seventh and hold back that resolution, then this creates this drawn out feeling of suspense. First it happens for your ears, and then it happens for your mood. So to change it up and show you just how much the music affects the mood, let's rewatch this clip again with different music.
I think I should watch the whole movie like that. So I think it's pretty clear just what the music does to affect the atmosphere of the film. If you have different music, it's it's not the same. It's what John Carpenter was really a master at. He was a master at blending his music with the lighting, with the acting, with the editing to create this really scary movie that has become a classic and has influenced so many horror movies that came after it. So happy Halloween everybody. If you liked this video and you want more of them, subscribe to our YouTube channel and you will get more of them. Also please, please tell us that you liked it by giving us a like and leaving a comment saying how awesome it is down below. And share it with your friends on your social media page. Do all that stuff. If you want to learn how to play your own scary movie music, you can visit our website, libertyparkmusic.com. You can also learn about music theory there, so you can be a nerd like me. I'm not really that smart. This isn't that hard. You go on libertyparkmusic.com, you go to our music theory sites, and you can learn all about all this different kinds of stuff.